Hello flower letter friends and welcome to another love letter from Hanny. I um, am hoping that your spring is off to a better start than mine is. We are here in Utah and have had snow up until about a week ago and now it's starting to flood. So it's been interesting so far. <laughs> we'll see how the rest of it goes. Um, but I'm kind of sad because I really wanted to plant a garden. Uh, I've been planning it since last year and I laid out our plot. I'll, I'll post some, some pictures maybe on Instagram and show you guys what I, what I did last year. Um, and, uh, and so I've been so excited, but it hasn't warmed up enough for me to plant anything yet. So my, my bulbs out in my courtyard though are coming in. Our, we have this little courtyard that we built in front of our house to kind of make a little secret garden because I've always wanted to do that. And um, I planted a ton of bulbs last year. So they're finally coming up, but um, they're waiting to bloom, I think, until it warms up enough, uh, enough and they don't uh, get flooded out. So thankfully we're not in a flood zone, but up in Salt Lake and other areas, they're starting to get some, some pretty, pretty good flooding. So play, pray for us. We're, we're trying to make it through the spring. Um, we're really grateful for the moisture though. So it's not all bad, but it's just coming really fast. So <laughs> anyway, one of the uh, great things about living in the high desert. So Anyway, um, I've been thinking about you guys a lot again today, or this last little while, and have thinking have been thinking about um, kind of a, just a thought that I wanted to share with you. So I have just recently had the wonderful, super exciting opportunity to start sharing Anne of Green Gables with my my daughter. I've been waiting to do this since like. I was little, just thinking about, oh, I can't wait to just read this with my little girl. We're not reading it yet. We've read some like summarized children's versions of the books so far, um, but uh, but we're just starting to watch the movies. So she's getting introduced to Anne of Green Gables, which she, Anne surely is one of my most favorite literary characters, as I'm sure you know, she, many of you um, love her as as well. But um, there's something about last time, last uh, my last love letter to you guys where we talked about kindred spirits a bit. And it's just put this, this thought in my mind and I actually can't remember if this phrase is in Anne of Green Gables or if it's in um, one of my other uh, favorite authors, uh, Georgette Heyer. She, I know she uses it as well, as well but there's this uh, phrase called um, diamonds of the first water. I don't know if you guys have ever heard that phrase but it's, it's in one of those two uh, series. And it's used to kind of describe these just really, you know, incandescent souls, these, uh, these kindred spirits, um, and just really lovely top-notch people. Anyway, I've, been, I've had that idea on my mind, this idea of diamonds of the first water, um, and it's come together with this other uh, idea and phrase that I've thought a lot about over my life, especially over the last um, 15 years or so, as I've had some interesting experiences with um, with women in my life. <laughs> I have seven sisters, so I've had a lot of experience with women in my life, but um, as I've become an adult, they've, they've been, I've had so many wonderful ones, but there's been a few that have really been challenging for me. And um, this idea, it, it's, it's a phrase called only a diamond can cut a diamond, has been running through my mind a lot lately. And I just wanted to kind of talk to you all about this idea a little bit because this idea of being daughters of the first water or diamonds of the first water and then this idea of only a diamond can cut a diamond has just really kind of come together in my mind and and what it has come to mean to me is this idea that we as women I'm talking to women because I know the majority of our readers are women so but if you're men out there I'm talking to you too I'm sorry I don't want to be uh, exclusive about this but you know the flower layers are kind of a woman's product so <laughs> I do kind of know that a lot of a lot of you listening are women um, but anyways this idea of women being these diamonds these diamonds of a fir the first water these wonderfully incandescent souls that have the ability to capture light and shine and reflect that light back into the world so wonderfully absolutely true for men as well um, but in this instance I'm speaking to women mostly um, and but this idea that we have this ability to capture this light and then reflect this light back into the world like a diamond does we also have this ability to cut other diamonds with our words and with our deeds and um, 
and I, be, I, I guess what I've been thinking about so much is how much of a responsibility we have being diamonds of the first water to, um, to also be careful with how we use our words and our deeds uh, uh, with those around us. And um, I had this experience about, gosh, 13 years ago or something, where I, I had this, um, this friend who I had, we were really, really close. I, 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 at least I felt like we were. And um, some things had happened between us where we fell out. And um, I, I just remember I was just so confused by what had happened with our friendship because it just had like I feel like I've always struggled a little bit with social cues being more of an introverted person and more of a gentle soul I I've relied actually heavily on my older sister my older sister uh, Becca who many of you have come in contact with through customer service she was our customer service rep for a while and now she actually is my assistant and and is over our inventory but she's just this amazing light She's so bubbly and she just has this really amazing ability to, um, to, to interact with people. And she's two years older than me, so we went through high school together. And I, I didn't realize until she got married and moved away and, and then I was kind of on my own how much I depended on her ability to be so social for my own uh, um, social like capabilities. Because she is just... She, it's just one of her gifts. She's just always been really good with people and people just really love her. So um, she's like the life of the party kind of a person. And so um, anyway, with this friend, sorry, that was a long detour, <laughs> but now you know how I feel about my sister. She's awesome. Um, but we went uh, with this friend. I, I just felt like I couldn't quite understand what had gone wrong with us. I was trying to fix it. And no matter what I did, it just seemed to make it worse. And um, anyway, this, this whole situation with this friend really was, was pretty traumatic for me. It was, it was very, one, it was very embarrassing to me because it was, it was somewhat public. And it affected much more, a larger sphere of my life than just our friendship. It was, she was a part of our, my community. She was part of my church community. It was, it was really difficult. And so, um, I kind of shut down emotionally um, from this experience and it took me a really long time to get over it and I can't really say that I am fully over it yet just because of how deeply cut I was by it because this friend had meant so much to me she'd been such a a great blessing in my life at the time uh, being a young mother and just trying to figure out all of that um, and and having that companionship was so valuable to me but um, I've learned a great deal from that experience, uh, painfully learned a great deal from it. But one thing that I took away from it the most was how careful I always wanted to be with the words that I said to those around me because of how her words had cut me so deeply. And, and not only did they cut me so deeply, but they shut me down in areas of my life where I felt like I was able to do so much good before and then suddenly I felt so paralyzed by those things and I guess what I what those thoughts the thoughts that have been coming over to me over the last little while what I wanted to why I was reflecting on them so much and wanted to share them with you is again I, I know I keep on referring to the state of the world right now but it is kind of a crazy world that we live in and it, and it weighs heavily on my mind especially as we hear so much from all of you um, in your own personal lives, the, the difficulties that you're facing and, and how the flower letters are helping and just you know giving you that little light at the end of the tunnel and, and how, great, um, how grateful I am that you choose to share those things with us uh, because it, it really validates the hard work that we put in on this end and really gives a lot of meaning to what we're doing. But I also, um, having that window into your lives really drives home to me how important it is to watch our our words about people and to people and our actions and towards people because we just never know what is going on in somebody else's life we never know how a word that we can say can completely shut them down in areas just because we don't know the whole story and and i know a, like 
this is like social grace 101 or whatever you want to call it but i just think that it's never you can never be reminded of that often enough of that you know most people are carrying a much bigger burden than we have any idea of and how kindness and soft words and um, encouraging words and withholding judgment and withholding our anger giving forgiveness liberally all those those wonderful things that seem to be in such uh, scarce supply right now in the world I just feel like as being a diamond of the first water <laughs> as I know that so many of, of you are is such a um, it's such a great responsibility to be careful uh, to make sure that that light that we attract um, that we use it to uplift and and bring relief and joy and um, and confidence instill confidence in the people around us and so as daughters of the first water or diamonds i don't know why i keep on saying daughters but diamonds of the first water i just want you all to know one how many of you have touched my life for good and, and Mike's life and, and all of our company by sharing your enthusiasm about the, the flower letters, but also how much the flower letters are helping you and giving us that extra uh, meaning to what we're doing, but also how much confidence I have in you knowing that so many of you are kindred spirits and do have that those gentle souls, how much confidence I have in you to reach out and and shine your light into the world to uplift and to um, extend forgiveness and to withhold judgment and to say a kind word in a moment when an, a, an unkind word would be much more, um, feel much more justified, if that makes sense. Um, you, you'll probably never know what your kind words do um, they will go out into the world and they will do what they're going to do and you will probably never learn in that particular instance what that meant to that person but I assure you as being a person who has received uh, kind words in my darkest moments as I'm sure many of you have um, those smallest kindnesses those those little lights that people shine for you um, in those dark moments are are definitely the most valuable and the most appreciated and so I just wanted to leave that with you this is a long love letter I'm sorry I hope I got around to my point soon enough but um, just remember that you are diamonds of the first water and that you have this ability to shine so much light in the world but you also have the capability of cutting other diamonds and and so um, treading carefully with with your words and your deeds and your your, your actions towards other people, um, especially where the world is in such a tumultuous place, I think, is the answer to, to making the world a, a safer, kinder, more loving, more forgiving place. And those softer things about us, as much as the world tries to tell us that they're not valuable or that they're weak or whatever, you know, there's so many different views on what it means to be a gentle soul. I feel like Again, like I said last time, you're more needed than ever. And your soft words and your kindness and your forgiveness and your empathy towards others is, is infinitely valuable, infinitely more valuable, I think, now than it's ever been. So I just wanted to leave that extra bit of encouragement to you to be um, gently brave, <laughs> I guess is the word that I want to say, or the combination of words that I'm trying to say, because it does take bravery to be a gentle soul in a world so fierce. And, um, and again, courage is not the absence of fear. It is moving forward in spite of the fear. And so anyway, I just wanted to leave that extra bit of love with you. And thank you so much for those of you who have sent uh, notes over the past little while. Again, they mean so much to us. And I will leave you with that, and I hope you have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you guys next time. Take care.